part that Madam Ministry played in the rebuilding of Bartlett Crossing was um, in the uh, role of support for the most part. Um, years ago, in the, in the late 90s, we had accumulated tax credits, uh, but for whatever reason, that process didn't fall through. Um, There's a lot of things that occurred um, that, that did not uh, materialize in terms of our rebuilding that community. And so our tax credits were, were sitting there waiting for a developer to come in. Um, what Madam Ministry uh, did was to create the vision to, to keep before the community the possibilities of doing something uh, with that, uh, all that degradation and that, that blight over there in the Bartlett Crossing area. Um, our church has always been passionate. As a matter of fact, in 1993, I came to um, uh, Macon, Georgia, as pastor as Lizzie Chapel, of Lizzie Chapel Baptist Church. And I called down to the city and I asked them, uh, what are you planning on in, to doing, in, doing in this community? And they absolutely said nothing. Um, right then I said that before I leave here, I don't know how long my time is going to be in Macon, Georgia, but when I leave here, people will know about Lizzie Chapel Baptist Church at Bartlett Crossing Community. I understand at one time it was very viable, a very thriving uh, community, and uh, it's, it's my vision uh, to restore that and bring it back to life, and it's just a joy to see that it's happening. But uh, Madam Ministry's uh, specific role was that of inspiration, creating a vision. Uh, we've had uh, meetings, community-wide meetings, where people would come together and um, brainstorm and vision. Um, uh, about uh, the possibilities of our community and got great support from the community, got great support from downtown and, and other areas of the community. So we were there kind of spearheading but, but not actually doing the physical and financial work. So. Madam Ministry is a ministry uh, that had its origin um, in Lizzie Chapel Baptist Church. Uh, MANA means uh, Ministry Addressing Neighborhood Needs Abundantly. And that specifically is what our vision and our goal is, to, to be a resource for the community, to be inspiration and to develop um, programs and, and um, ideas to, to help the community develop in a way that revitalizes and, and restructures the community. It's, it's the nonprofit arm of Lizzie Chapel Baptist Church, and Lizzie Chapel has been tremendously, tremendous in supporting the work um, of MANA Ministries. So, um, we are there to be whatever needs. We've, since our origin, we've had um, a, a computer lab. Uh, we have uh, summer youth programs. We've had um, uh, after-school programs. And right now, we're in the development. Just a couple years ago, we, we've acquired our CHOTO status, where now we can receive funds from HUD to do some uh, developing, building houses and things of that nature. The Bartlett Crossing uh, project is going to have tremendous impact uh, on our community. Right now it's bringing a, a larger tax base into the community. It's bringing people, families. There's, I, I was riding uh, through the community the other day. I saw kids riding bikes and I seen young sisters walking the streets, exercising. It's something you haven't, we haven't seen in a long time. So life is returning back to the community and hopefully um, our church along with the area and other uh, entities can continue uh, the building process to bring uh, this this community back to life. Well, Manor Ministry has a is a choto for the city of Macon, and we have received funds to build three houses for home ownership. Uh, Lizzie Chapel Baptist Church donated the properties. We received a grant, and we brought the community in to decide what we was going to do. And due to the economy, we were able to build three houses instead of four as we started to do. The houses for home ownership is for low to moderate income people. You do not have to live in this community. You do not have to be a member of Lizzie Chapel Baptist Church. This is a community property. So anybody can purchase one of the houses as long as they meet the qualifications. The qualification would be based on the income scale that Department of HUD uh, puts out each year, where it's, it's based on the amount of money and the number of people in the household. Let me say about Felton Homes that we are extremely proud of Felton Homes and the way uh, it is uh, turning out. 
Uh, Felton Homes was uh, originally built in about 1940, uh, 100 units. Uh, it needed to be redone, remodeled, and what we were able to do is to apply for a specific grant that the government was giving uh, for alternative energy s sources. And, and by that, uh, we, we were able to remodel those units using the shells, uh, but the primary source of energy is solar panels. Uh, if you ride by, you'll see solar panels on top of, uh, of the home. We knew for a long time that we needed to do some kind of transformational redevelopment of Felton, but didn't have the resources to do it. We'd done enough pre-planning work, though, that when the opportunity opened up for this competitive grant, we were able to jump right on it and get an application in timely and win in the competition. Um, another important part of it that's almost as unique as the buildings themselves is we, we pioneered some new ways of financing the housing improvements. We combined the big grant that we got from the federal government with low-income housing tax credits and bond proceeds to turn about $8.6 million grant to about a $13.5 million project, which let us really do the job right. Here's the main thing I know, though. It contributes a very significant part of the total electrical, electrical demand for the neighborhood, more than 25%. So much so that if the solar panels are actually producing at any given moment more electricity than the apartment is consuming, the electricity, the excess electricity actually flows back through the meter and in effect we sell it back to Georgia Power. Of course the ultimate uh, beneficiary here is the consumer. Our residents who are low income people get a really nice place to live and they wind up with an energy bill they can afford. Uncle Sam gets get good value for the money because we serve as a test bed for this technology that they can evaluate. I am, I am delighted with, with the things that the Macon Housing Authority has done. Um, they, they, have, they have been very innovative uh, in the way that they approach financing, uh, and they have been able to leverage uh, uh, some of the uh, housing tax credits for low income or elderly housing. They've been able to leverage uh, that and get private uh, contributions to go in as well. Uh, they have done several uh, projects that have set them apart from other housing authorities around the country. I mean, 2009 Vineville Avenue is a, a project a lot of people don't even recognize it to be a, a, a project of the Macon Housing Authority. But actually one of their subsidiary corporations uh, is operating that and it's doing wonderfully well. It's a a, a mixed revenue uh, so that there are some people in the in the complex that pay market rate there are some that are, are slightly subsidized and then there are some that are public housing occupants um, but to have the blend of, of revenue levels uh, in a magnificent facility like that they've also done the same thing or similar thing at Pearl Stevens School on, on uh, Napier Avenue uh, that's another fantastic project but two of the ones that I am most proud of, uh, they, they were able to put a project together at the request of the city and using uh, one and a half million dollars uh, of, of uh, neighborhood stabilization money uh, that we were entitled uh, to under a grant and actually transformed the site of the old Macon Homes apartments uh, there at Bartlett Crossing in front of Lizzie Chapel Church. We're able to tear that down, and uh, I believe it was uh, member of council, council member uh, Lonnie Miley that described it as 14 acres of pure blight. Uh, it was a haven for prostitution and drugs and all kinds of crime, dilapidated beyond belief. It looked like something out of Sarajevo, uh, the, it was so bombed out looking terrible. So we were able to tear that down and replace it with... 75 new single-family residences that are phenomenal. New street grid pattern in there. I mean, it has transformed that entire neighborhood. Uh, that's one. But then they also applied for and received this technology uh, grant and got several million dollars and transformed uh, Felton homes. Put in 
uh, solar panels and ultra energy efficient panels uh, absolutely transformed Felton homes uh, into or from what had been a kind of a military barracks like look neighborhood into a neighborhood that is that is just ideal. I mean, this is just wonderful. So no, I'm very, very proud of, of the Macon Housing Authority and all the good things they've been able to accomplish. And I'm delighted to be a partner uh, with them in ongoing efforts.